Today we have 15 Minecraft garden build hacks that you need to know. Now we all know that building a house is one thing but what really makes it stand out above the rest is having an awesome garden to complement it. So today I'm going to show you 15 garden build hacks that will completely transform any boring garden into something awesome. So with that being said, let's get building. First on the list is one of the most underused items in Minecraft. That's right, we're talking about the glow lichen, which was added in the 1.18 update and can be found in the caves. Glow lichen works amazing when used on the edges of paths. Not only does it make the edges appear as if the cobblestone and grass are blending, but it also helps light up the area at night. And with the new 1.18 mechanics, it should make your gardens a lot more safer. This next Minecraft trick has been around for quite some time now, but it's still very underused, especially for well-kept gardens. You see, if we add alternating rows of grass blocks and green concrete powder, we get a kind of mowed lawn effect, which gives us a really nice look for gardens. We can also change up the green concrete powder for moss blocks, which also gives us a very similar effect. My personal favorite is the green concrete powder. Either way, you get a very similar effect. Like many of you, I often divide my gardens up with some kind of wall. So why not make use of some of these empty stone walls by adding some redstone or copper ore. Then you can go ahead and cover it with some vines and this gives a kind of effect like you've got berries growing up the wall. It's a very simple trick but it certainly adds a great detail to any garden. Azalea is perhaps one of my new favourite additions to the game. Not only are these great at making small bush decorations, but you can also top them with moss or moss carpets to create larger versions. One of my favorite uses though has to be placing them in a row on top of some cool dirt to create a small hedge. We can also go ahead and top it with some moss blocks or some moss carpets to create taller types of hedge and add a little bit of detail across the top. We can also use the same example to make a hedge maze by stacking up about two blocks of the moss on top but I would suggest laying out the layout for your maze first of all so you know exactly where you're laying all of your bushes. Otherwise, it might become a little bit confusing. Glowberries are yet again another one of my favorite additions. These are perfect for creating overgrown trees and even work great underneath shelters to make them look as low plant life has grown through them. They are also another great way to add some light into an area. So if you have some dark spots in your garden, why not add some shelters and then add some glowberries to keep them well lit up at night. Don't forget that you can also use shears to stop them from growing, which means we can keep these looking very decorative and not overgrowing too much. So either way, this is a win-win for decorations when it comes to your garden. Unfortunately, shears can't be used to stop bamboo, sugarcane, saplings or vines from growing. But luckily, we have the use of string. You see, if you place down string at certain points, it will stop most of these items from growing. For example, we can place them above a sapling and the sapling will not grow any further. If we place them above any sugarcane or bamboo, the bamboo or sugarcane will stop growing at those points. The same goes with the vines. We can place it underneath the vines at any point and it will stop them from growing in that direction. This means we can place them to the sides or underneath of them and it will keep it kept in well proportion, keeping those gardens neat and stop them from looking overgrown and a complete mess. It's a small little tip, but it certainly helps keep your gardens looking the way you want and not too overgrown. Ponds are another great feature for any garden, but they often get left looking plain and boring. So why not spice this up by adding in some Japanese lilies? You see, by placing down some warp trap doors with some brown coral fans on top and then surrounding them with either lily pads or drip leaf, we get a very convincing looking Japanese lily, which really does make the pond look really nice. You can even switch the brain coral fan out for some amethyst buds, which also gives us a very nice effect. But personally, my favorite is the brain coral fans because it's got that pink tone to it. And overall, I just really like the way it looks. One thing I would love to see in Minecraft is some kind of water reeds. Unfortunately, we don't have anything like this in game at the moment, but this next trick is certainly a great alternative. You see, by simply placing down some green glass panes and placing on some spruce fence on top, we can pull off a kind of ball reed effect, which looks great. We can also switch the fence out for some brown candles for a smaller version. Just be sure not to add too many, otherwise it can make your pond look a little bit cluttered. Planters and flower areas are probably one of the oldest tricks in the books, but they are certainly a great way to fill any empty space. And the great thing is that there are so many different ways that these can be done from small walled in planter boxes to hanging planters, 
flower areas surrounded by hedges, even decorative style planters or statue style planters with hanging leaves and vines are just a few of the different styles you can use to decorate any garden area. I think it pretty much goes without saying that building any type of garden or park area is going to need some kind of seating area, whether that be a large table and chairs or a simple bench on a path. One thing I like to do here is make tables with umbrellas. You see, by using either string or trap doors, we can place carpets down on top to make a convincing umbrella. We can also make an umbrella look like it's closed by placing down some banners instead. If you're making a park bench, then using a combination of stairs and slabs can create some really cool effects. You see, we can make use of the little gaps to look like details, which in my opinion looks way better than using just trap doors. One small addition I love placing around gardens is having hanging flower pots. These are a nice little decorative trick that add a small bit of life and detail to the area. Now, I would only do this by using ferns, azaleas and flowering azaleas or cactus, as most other flowers tend to look a bit out of place. Either way, these make a really great little feature and are nice just to fill in small little areas just for those little finishing touches. Do you feel like your trees are looking a little bit plain? If so, then why not turn them into apple trees? You see, by simply placing down some flower pots with some ferns in, it makes it look like the flower pot is an apple and using the fern makes it look like it's connected to the tree. So these make really convincing apple trees. The only problem here is that this trick will only work on Java edition. Unfortunately, the trick won't work on Bedrock edition, but if you are playing on Java edition, this does make a really cool effect and works great in areas like orchards. Do you feel like your garden needs a bit more color? If so, then why not add some of these mini mushrooms? You see, by placing down a birch fence, diorite wall, or an end rod, we can top these with a mushroom block. And these give us a really cool little decorative item for the garden. Now, admittedly, these do look a little bit of a fantasy style, but they are a great way of adding in a little feature with a little bit of color to the garden. If you're using one with an end rod, then these double up as a light source. So it helps keep the nasties out of the garden. Campfires have many great uses in Minecraft, but for gardens, they are great for bouldering off little crop patches. They also work really well if you want to section off a small area for flowers. This helps keep things looking more organized and just generally makes the area look a little bit cleaner. These work great for canopies and sheltered areas. Just be sure that you're placing them in the same row so that they all join in a line to create a nice effect across the top of the shelter. And of course, make sure you have a shovel so that you can put it out. Greenhouses are a great feature to include in any garden. They're very easy to squeeze in because you can build them on any size. So whether you're creating a small garden or a large garden, it's very easy to fit one in with the size that you're building. One of the biggest tips I can give you here is to use white stained glass when building one. This is purely because most greenhouses steam up on the inside and the white stained glass here really pulls off this effect. It just doesn't quite look the same when you're using clear glass. So my personal preference will always be using white glass because it creates that nice misty effect. Need to make an entranceway into your garden? Well, we don't always have to make these look big and flashy. In fact, sometimes the best way to make these is to make them small and simple. This just keeps them looking nice and tidy and generally just fits nicer with the garden feel. One of my favorite ways of building garden entrances is by using archways. Now, of course, there are many different ways that we can create archways here, but one of the most decorative ways that I like doing it is by using fences. You see, by using fences and creating an archway at the top, we can literally cover the entire thing with leaves, leaving our odd patch here and there. And what this does is create a kind of trellis look with a nice archway full of leaves as if they've grown from one side right over to the other, and overall, I just think it creates a really decorative look for a garden entrance. There are, of course, hundreds of different ways that you can create a decorative gateway, but this is just some of the ways that I like to do it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.